people who wish to harm you often carry out these five actions, and many times you might not even notice. Identifying these individuals is not always an easy task. However, there are clear signs that can alert you to these ill-intentioned people. In this video, we will reveal the five things that these people often do, providing essential warning signs so that you can protect yourself and create a healthy environment around you. Just as there are those who wish you well, there are also those who seek to destroy you for who you are. If you seek clarity and well-being in your relationships, this content is especially for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive more perspectives that can transform the way you see the world. Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, taught that the ability to discern the character of others is crucial to preserving our inner tranquility. You might be wondering what characterizes a bad person, and that's precisely what I'm going to explain now. A bad person is one who acts selfishly and doesn't care about harming others to achieve success. That's why they perform the five actions I'm about to address. Epictetus, another Stoic philosopher, emphasized the importance of maintaining inner balance regardless of the actions of others around us. Without further ado, let's delve into the first revealing signs of people with malicious intentions. Stoic reflection leads us to understand that control over our reactions to the actions of others is one of the pillars to achieve inner serenity. First sign, constant gossip. One of the most evident characteristics of people with bad intentions is the persistent habit of spreading rumors about others. Although gossip may seem harmless at first glance, in reality, it undermines trust and creates divisions among people. Seneca mentioned that gossip is the poison that contaminates human relationships, undermining trust and harmony. Second sign, excessive competitiveness. While a certain degree of competition can be healthy and motivating, people with bad intentions often exhibit a level of competitiveness that exceeds acceptable limits. Epictetus warned us about the danger of unchecked competition, which can divert us from life's true purpose, the pursuit of virtue and wisdom. Third sign, lack of empathy. Empathy refers to the ability to understand and share another person's feelings. Individuals with bad intentions often lack this essential skill. Epictetus taught that empathy is a sign of inner strength and a virtue that connects us with humanity. Fourth sign, manipulation. Manipulation is a tool often employed by people with bad intentions, resorting to tactics such as emotional blackmail or even blatant lies to achieve their goals. Seneca emphasized the importance of maintaining integrity in the face of external manipulations, preserving moral integrity. You might now wonder how to protect yourself from these individuals or even prevent them from entering your life. The answer lies in cultivating self-awareness and strengthening your intuition. The Stoics emphasize the importance of self-knowledge as a key to facing life's adversities and maintaining inner serenity. The more you understand yourself, your values and limits, the easier it becomes to identify when someone is crossing those boundaries. Learning to trust your instincts is crucial. If something feels wrong or you sense manipulation, heed these signs. Feeling your intuition is a powerful tool developed over thousands of years of human evolution designed to protect you from threats. Epictetus taught that true freedom lies in the ability to control our reactions to what is not within our control. Another valuable technique is to create a circle of trust involving people you know and who have shown loyalty over time. These individuals can serve as a support system, offering perspective and guidance when doubts arise. The Stoics advocated for the importance of surrounding oneself with true friends, as it strengthens the spirit and provides comfort in difficult times. Continuing our exploration of the revealing signs of ill-intentioned people, 
Let's delve into more subtle, yet more dangerous characteristics, as they are rarely perceived without careful attention. Epictetus stressed the importance of deeply examining situations to understand the true intentions of the people around us. Fifth sign, constant victimization. Someone who systematically positions themselves as a victim, regardless of the situation, may be attempting to manipulate others' feelings and perceptions. Seneca warned about the danger of involving oneself with people who constantly portray themselves as victims, as this could be a strategy to manipulate others' sympathy. While we all face challenges, ill-intentioned individuals resort to the narrative of their tragic stories as a strategy to divert attention from their own flaws and evade responsibilities. The Stoics emphasize the importance of taking responsibility for our actions, even in the face of adversity, as a crucial step for moral growth. Disregard for boundaries is a crucial characteristic to identify in any healthy relationship. Ill-intentioned people, however, often ignore established limits, invading privacy, making unreasonable demands, or minimizing others' feelings and needs. This disregard clearly reveals an attempt to establish dominance and control over others. Stoic teachings remind us that our inner peace should not be compromised by others' intrusive behaviors. Now armored with this knowledge, the next step is to understand how we can protect ourselves and respond to these behaviors. Firstly, it's essential to strengthen your own boundaries. Be clear about what is acceptable and what is not in your relationships. Epictetus highlighted that true freedom lies in maintaining control over our judgments and reactions to external circumstances. Do not hesitate to communicate your boundaries and defend yourself when they are crossed. Secondly, practice assertiveness. This doesn't imply being aggressive, but rather expressing your feelings, thoughts and needs clearly and respectfully. The Stoics emphasized the importance of gentle firmness, a posture that allows for clear expression without disrespecting others. Assertiveness allows you to assert your rights without violating the rights of others. Thirdly, seek support if you feel you're dealing with a person of ill intent, especially if that person holds a position of power or control over you. Stoic teachings suggested seeking guidance and support from trustworthy individuals in the face of adversity. Finally, remember that you have the right to step away if a relationship is causing more harm than good. If you constantly feel exhausted, belittled or manipulated, take a step back, assess the situation and consider whether investing energy and time in that relationship is worthwhile. Stoic philosophers always emphasized the importance of preserving our inner peace, even if it means distancing ourselves from toxic relationships. Therefore, it's crucial to remember that while it's important to be aware of the signs of ill-intentioned people, it's also essential not to become overly suspicious. Most people we encounter in our lives have good intentions and are simply trying to navigate the world in the best way possible. The Stoics highlighted the importance of maintaining a balance between vigilance and trust, reminding us that wisdom lies in discerning the true intentions behind actions. Today's journey has provided us with valuable tools to protect our well-being and cultivate healthy, rewarding relationships. Always remember to value and take care of yourself, as by doing so, you create an environment conducive to positive and enriching relationships to flourish. Stoic philosophers taught us that true wealth lies in inner tranquility and in the quality of the relationships we cultivate throughout life. If you value this knowledge, subscribe to the channel to not miss any content that can transform your perspective. Join us in this adventure of personal growth. Stoic teachings invite us to constantly seek knowledge and wisdom as tools for a more fulfilling and meaningful life. We hope these reflections have been valuable to you. 
Today's journey has shed light on the telling signs of ill-intentioned people, but it has also provided us with strategies to protect our well-being and cultivate healthy relationships. The teachings of Stoic philosophers like Seneca and Epictetus echo through the ages, offering us a guide to finding inner peace in challenging circumstances and in the pursuit of enriching relationships. Always remember to value and take care of yourself, as by doing so, you create an environment conducive to positive and gratifying relationships to flourish. If this content resonated with you, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to continue this journey of self-discovery and personal growth. We appreciate you joining us in this quest for wisdom and growth. Always remember, nurture your inner peace, stay alert to the signs, but also trust in the beauty of genuine relationships. Until the next journey. The wise Stoic philosopher Seneca uttered a lasting truth. It's not that we have little time, but rather that we waste much of it. Inspired by this timeless wisdom, we are prompted to reflect on how our time management and daily choices directly impact our journey and well-being. In tune with Stoic philosophy, let's explore habits that divert us from the path of serenity and seek ways to recapture stoic direction. Amidst the complexities of contemporary life, and as customary before we begin, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and remember to enable notifications, thus helping me continue spreading stoic wisdom. Habit one to be eliminated, giving in to procrastination. Imagine having important projects to complete, essential tasks to accomplish, and instead of diligently moving forward, you find yourself constantly postponing these responsibilities. Maybe it's a crucial report you need to write, but instead of starting, you get distracted or procrastinate until the deadline becomes imminent. Or perhaps you have long-term goals, but instead of taking consistent action, you succumb to procrastination, postponing the progress that could take you closer to your objectives. In an era of digital distraction and constant demands, procrastination becomes an easy trap to fall into. The pursuit of instant gratification and temporary avoidance of responsibilities often lead us to postpone important tasks, compromising our personal and professional growth. Practically speaking, procrastination is like postponing the ascent of a mountain. You may temporarily feel relief by avoiding hard work, but eventually you'll realize that you're getting farther away from reaching your goals. This roller coaster of productivity prevents us from achieving a consistent sense of accomplishment and satisfaction. The prudent approach would be to find internal motivation. Procrastination deprives us of personal and professional fulfillment and the solution lies in acknowledging that true satisfaction comes from task completion and continuous progress. To incorporate this principle of overcoming procrastination, the next time you feel the temptation to postpone a task, pause and reflect, why am I procrastinating? Am I committed to my personal and professional growth? If the answer is yes, then immediate and consistent action should be the priority. Remember, while temporary relief may be enticing, true satisfaction and fulfillment come from continuous effort and completing important tasks rather than procrastination that steers us away from our goals. Habit two to be eliminated, living in perpetual dissatisfaction. Imagine looking around and feeling constant dissatisfaction with what you have be it your career, your home, your accomplishments, or even your appearance. You constantly find yourself wishing for more, comparing your life to others, and questioning whether what you have is truly enough. This relentless pursuit of more can become a trap, leading to anxiety, discontent, and even harming close relationships. 
Living in perpetual dissatisfaction is like being on an endless quest for something that never seems attainable. Modern society often encourages us to relentlessly pursue the next goal, the next achievement, without truly appreciating or valuing what we already possess. This mindset can leave us in a constant state of restlessness, undermining our ability to enjoy the present. Stoic philosophy offers a valuable perspective on dissatisfaction. Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, stated, Man is unhappy because he doesn't know he's happy. Only that. This Stoic wisdom suggests that true satisfaction doesn't come from the relentless pursuit of more, but from cultivating a conscious appreciation for what we already have. Therefore, the next time you find yourself immersed in dissatisfaction, pause and reflect. Is the relentless pursuit of more genuinely bringing lasting happiness? Am I neglecting the joys and achievements present in my life? Practicing gratitude and acknowledging the blessings of the present can be a powerful way to break the cycle of dissatisfaction. Adopting this stoic approach allows you to find contentment in the little things, recognizing that true wealth lies in appreciating the present instead of constantly chasing an idealized future. By doing so, you build a solid foundation for happiness centered on acceptance and gratitude for what is, rather than getting lost in the endless pursuit of what has not yet been achieved. Habit 3 to be eliminated, resisting the uncertainty of changes. Imagine yourself at a crossroads, facing an imminent change in your life, whether in your career, relationships or lifestyle. Instead of embracing the opportunity for growth and learning, you feel paralyzed by uncertainty. Resistance to change, often driven by the fear of the unknown, can become a self-imposed prison, limiting your potential for evolution. Life is inherently fluid, filled with inevitable transitions and transformations. However, aversion to uncertainty can lead us to cling to the familiar, even if it means staying in situations that no longer serve us. Apparent stability may offer a temporary sense of comfort, but over time, refusing to accept changes can result in personal and professional stagnation. Stoic philosophy reminds us of the impermanence of life, the transient nature of all things. Embracing this fundamental truth can be liberating. Stoic teachings encourage us to embrace life's constant flow, recognizing that true freedom comes from accepting uncertainty. Just as the river flows incessantly, life is constantly in motion. Resistance to uncertainty is like trying to hold water in your hands, a futile battle that only brings frustration. Instead, we can learn to swim with the current, embracing changes as opportunities for growth and discovery. Therefore, the next time you find yourself facing the uncertainty of changes, take a deep breath and ask yourself, am I resisting something that could be a disguised blessing? Is this resistance preventing me from evolving and reaching my full potential? By cultivating a mindset of acceptance and adaptability, you position yourself to transform uncertainty into a springboard for personal development and lasting fulfillment. Habit 4. To be eliminated. Nourishing vices. Imagine facing the temptation of a vicious habit, whether related to food, substances, or harmful behaviors. Instead of seeking a healthy balance, you indulge recklessly, falling into the trap of compulsively feeding these vices. This relentless pursuit of immediate gratification can result in negative consequences for physical, mental and emotional health. In contemporary society, we are often bombarded by stimuli that can turn into addictions, from excessive consumption of processed foods to dependence on substances or destructive behaviors. Seeking temporary escape from life's pressures can lead to a downward spiral where the vice becomes a relentless master. Stoic philosophy emphasizes the importance of self-mastery. Epictetus stated, 
it is easier to control at the beginning than at the end. This stoic perspective encourages us to be aware of our vicious inclinations before they gain unrestrained control over our lives. Just as a gardener tends to their garden, it is crucial to cultivate a healthy relationship with our desires and impulses. Instead of allowing vices to dominate us, we can practice moderation and self-awareness. Ask yourself, is this habit truly contributing to my long-term health and happiness, or is it merely momentary gratification? Facing our vices can free us from the chains that keep us bound in destructive patterns. The first step is to acknowledge the harmful nature of these behaviors, and then gradually work towards a more balanced life. By cultivating the inner strength to resist vicious temptations, you create a solid foundation for a healthier, fuller, and more meaningful life. Habit 5 to be eliminated, remaining in the comfort zone. Imagine yourself in a boat anchored in the harbor, safe and stable, but with the vast ocean in front of you, full of opportunities and adventures waiting to be discovered. However, instead of setting sail and exploring the unknown, you choose to stay safe in the familiarity of the harbor. Excessively staying in the comfort zone can be like anchoring your journey of personal and professional growth. The comfort zone is that cozy place where we feel secure, familiar and competent. However, while this area offers a temporary sense of security, staying in it for too long can result in stagnation and lack of progress. Just as a garden needs cultivation to flourish, our lives require new challenges and experiences to grow and thrive. Stoics emphasize the importance of challenge and overcoming adversity as essential means for personal development. Seneca wrote, It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Remaining in the comfort zone often means missing out on opportunities for learning, growth and discovery. Imagine two individuals facing a challenging job opportunity. One chooses to stay in their current position, avoiding the unknown, while the other decides to embrace the challenge, facing new responsibilities and learning valuable skills. While the former may feel temporarily comfortable, the latter is investing in their own development. To break the habit of settling into the comfort zone, it is crucial to cultivate a growth mindset. Regularly challenge yourself to do something that takes you slightly out of your comfort zone, whether it's learning a new skill, taking on a challenging task at work, or engaging in activities that promote personal growth. The next time you find yourself hesitant in the face of an opportunity outside your comfort zone, ask yourself, is this hesitation based on a real risk or simply the fear of the unknown? By embracing uncertainty and challenging yourself, you not only expand your horizons, but also discover new strength and resilience within yourself. Habit 6 to be eliminated, overconfidence. Imagine yourself in a challenging situation, a new task at work, for instance. Instead of approaching the situation with humility and a willingness to learn, you exude excessive self-confidence, convinced that you can handle anything effortlessly. While self-confidence is a valuable quality, when we exceed the limits and become overly confident, we risk underestimating challenges, ignoring valuable advice and compromising our personal growth. Self-confidence is a powerful tool, but like any tool, it requires moderation and balance. The fine line between healthy and excessive confidence can be subtle, and when crossed, it can lead to arrogant behaviors, resistance to constructive feedback, and even failures that could have been avoided with a more humble approach. Stoics, like Seneca, remind us of the importance of knowing our limitations. Excessive self-confidence often hinders the critical self-reflection necessary for self-development. Instead of diving into a mindset of continuous learning, those overly confident may remain trapped in a bubble of self-affirmation, failing to acknowledge areas for improvement. 
Consider two colleagues faced with a new project. One, aware of their skills, approaches the task with respect for its complexity, willing to learn from others. The other, excessively confident, underestimates the challenges and assumes they can easily handle everything alone. While the former grows through experience and effectively collaborates, the latter may face unnecessary obstacles due to their reckless self-confidence. To overcome the habit of excessive self-confidence, it is crucial to cultivate humility. Instead of considering yourself invulnerable, be open to continuous learning and constructive feedback. By recognizing and accepting your limitations, you create space for genuine personal growth. True confidence lies not only in believing in your abilities, but also in the ability to adapt, learn, and constantly evolve. Habit 7. To be eliminated. Dwelling on resentments or unhappiness. Imagine yourself in a scenario where life offers a constant spectacle, filled with opportunities for new beginnings and renewed joys. However, instead of fully engaging in this spectacle, you find yourself trapped in a cycle of dwelling on past resentments, nurturing persistent thoughts about disappointments, unresolved challenges, and moments of unhappiness. Similar to carrying a heavy emotional burden, the habit of dwelling on resentments and unhappiness is like being chained to past events, preventing you from moving forward and savoring the fresh experiences of the present. Each time these painful memories resurface, they cast a shadow over the potential brightness of current and future moments. Stoic philosophy reminds us of the influence of our opinions about events in our lives. Epictetus emphasized, Men are disturbed not by things, but by the views which they take of them. Just as in the case of living in the past, suffering does not solely reside in past experiences, but in the persistence of negative thoughts accompanying them. Consider two individuals facing similar challenges. One, when encountering difficulties, chooses to learn from them, release resentments, and focus on personal growth. The other, however, remains attached to resentment, continuously repeating the cycle of unhappiness. To break the habit of dwelling on resentments, it is essential to practice forgiveness, not only for others, but also for yourself. Acknowledge that everyone makes mistakes and faces adversities, but these experiences do not define your present or future. Mindfulness also plays a crucial role. When negative thoughts begin to arise, gently bring your mind back to the present, focusing on what is around you and the possibilities the current moment offers. By releasing the shackles of past resentments, you free yourself to embrace a lighter present and build a more promising and fulfilling future. Thank you for staying with the video until this point. For those who made it to the end, please write in the comments so I know you stayed until the end. Alternatively, share which of these habits you believe is urgent to remove from your life. Prepare for an incredible adventure. In this video, we will showcase 11 important things you need to eliminate from your life. In confidence, we invite you to actively participate in this journey with us. Share your opinions on each subject covered and stay until the end of the video. A journey of learning and growth awaits you. The upcoming moments are a chance for deep reflection and a better understanding of who you are. We believe the lessons we're about to share will enlighten and change your life. Let's begin. First point. When facing individuals who cause pain, there's no need to justify or explain yourself to those who hurt you. It's not essential to lament, engage in conflict, or argue with someone due to their negative behavior. If someone has made choices that disrespected you and caused harm, even if they were considered an ideal friend, 
The wisest approach is to move forward without seeking reasons. Stay calm and logical, focusing on your personal growth. There might come a time when this individual needs you and seeks support. At that moment, simply saying no might not be sufficient, and if it's necessary to clarify your reasons, do so. If this person hasn't shown integrity and breached your trust, you're not obligated to assist them. Therefore, avoiding conflicts and disputes is the way. It's ideal to discreetly distance yourself from this person because time will reveal the repercussions of their actions. Focus on taking care of yourself and let the future unveil what's best for both parties. By moving forward without feeling the need to justify or explain our decisions, we show great respect for ourselves and our boundaries. It's crucial to recognize that we should not tolerate the presence of those who harm or undervalue us. Everyone deserves to be respected and valued for their true essence. Thus, by choosing to discreetly remove harmful people from our lives, we are making a courageous choice in favor of our emotional health and personal development. Second point, dispensable goals. There will be occasions where you'll discern the value of making decisions, acting in a specific manner, or staying true to your authentic path. Often, it will be essential to set aside certain goals to prioritize the path that resonates most with your being. It's perfectly normal for this to happen since we rarely accomplish everything we plan, and sometimes it's crucial to let go of some things in favor of others. However, it's crucial to discreetly discard these dispensable goals without broadcasting your actions to the world. Avoid leaving traces or vague information, as that could expose your main plan. Adopt a more astute approach in this process, silently eliminating secondary objectives and making progressive changes in your life as situations unfold. Proceed with caution, safeguarding your strategies and allowing your choices to be guided by genuineness in pursuit of the path most congruent with your identity. Third point, relationships, whether friendships or romantic. It's vital not to disclose personal details or vent to others about the reasons behind the end of a friendship or relationship. The shared confidentiality is an exclusive right of yours and the other involved party. It's unnecessary to inform third parties about the reasons. No one is entitled to know about disagreements or adverse circumstances, as this could lead to the spread of rumors and further complicate the situation. If you feel the need to express yourself, do so introspectively, reflecting on what happened. The desire to share these experiences might indicate lingering unresolved hurts. Therefore, in any circumstance, the appropriate behavior is to evaluate these issues internally without involving third parties. If you're facing a conflict-ridden relationship, it's crucial to end it without announcing it to others. Keeping these matters confidential and dealing with them internally aids the process of acceptance and recovery, ensure the privacy and integrity of all parties involved, and take care of your emotional health with prudence and discretion. Fourth point, during high pressure moments, it's essential to avoid raising your voice in the presence of others and maintain control over excessive displays of frustration or anger. When feeling irritated, channel that emotion into productive activities. Transform that energy into motivation to progress toward your personal goals and train your body to handle stress. Reflect on your emotions and redirect the accumulated vigor into something that strengthens you. However, Proceed with caution and discretion, as losing control can make you more vulnerable in tense situations. Seek to alleviate this pressure privately by resolving issues, fulfilling obligations, and using logic as your tool. Avoid broadcasting your struggles. Instead, cherish what and who is already in your life, fostering gratitude. Find ways to discreetly mitigate emotional stress, seeking internal balance and healthier methods to overcome obstacles. 
If you've made it this far, I invite you to leave a comment to show your commitment to change. Don't forget to leave your like and subscribe for more content like this. Let's continue this journey together. Fifth point, spreading critical perceptions about others. Ideally, such opinions shouldn't occupy your mind. Consider the impression you convey when speaking negatively about someone. While you might have the opportunity to enrich a conversation or create constructive dialogue, choosing to express resentments deteriorates the atmosphere. Please avoid this behavior. Don't publicly proclaim your personal preferences or dislikes. Cultivate the art of diplomacy. If you don't appreciate someone, you can discreetly distance yourself or strive to maintain tolerable coexistence, acting sensibly. If facing issues with that person, seek dialogue and mutual understanding. However, your negative opinions and judgments about others should be promptly abandoned, regardless of your personal preferences. It's crucial to act diplomatically, demonstrating the ability to adapt to different contexts and interact positively despite differences. Adopt a respectful and empathetic attitude in interactions, fostering a more pleasant environment and healthier interpersonal relationships. Sixth point, avoid making constant comparisons with others. Each person has their own path, achievements and successes that should be valued without reference to others. The harmful habit of comparing our lives to others can negatively affect our emotional well-being and hinder our personal growth. Moreover, it diminishes our self-esteem as we risk falling into the trap of unfavorable comparison, focusing on what we believe we lack instead of recognizing our own strengths and achievements. Constantly comparing ourselves to others leads us astray from our own goals and desires, distracts us from what truly matters, and focuses on what we think we should have or achieve by others' standards. This prevents us from progressing on our own path and achieving our individual goals. By eliminating comparison, we can cultivate gratitude for our own circumstances, celebrating our own progress and growth. Remember that each person has their own way and individual circumstances, and comparing yourself to others is neither healthy nor productive, as each of us has different strengths, challenges, and life trajectories. Instead of comparing ourselves to others, it's more productive to focus on our own learning and personal development taking control of our lives with the wisdom of history's greatest philosophers, Stoicism in the 21st century is your map to resilience, well-being and prosperity. Turn challenges into triumphs, stress into strength, uncertainty into clarity. Seventh point, the conscious use of social media. Imagine for a moment that your life is a book filled with fascinating stories, learnings and adventures. Now, think of social media as a library where millions of other stories are shared every second. It sounds exciting, doesn't it? But here lies a subtle danger. Constant comparison. As we flip through the bright pages of these digital stories, we're often led to compare our most challenging chapters with the highlighted moments of others. This comparison, often unfair and unrealistic, can lead us into a cycle of dissatisfaction and envy. Notice how this can be detrimental. Considering this, it's essential to learn to limit our consumption of these digital stories. Imagine you decide to visit this digital library with a purpose. Of course, you enter find exactly what you need, be it connection, inspiration or information, and then leave, returning to the reality of your own book, the book of your life. But how do we do this in practice? Start by setting specific times of the day to check your social media, instead of getting lost in them all the time. Whether it's during breakfast, a work break, or at the end of the day. This helps create a structure that prevents social media from dominating your time and thoughts. Another effective strategy is to question the intention behind each online interaction. Ask yourself, Am I seeking something constructive here, 
or just killing time. This can help differentiate productive use from passive and aimless consumption. Furthermore, it's crucial to recognize the signs that social media is negatively affecting your mood or self-esteem. If you notice feeling down after using these platforms, perhaps it's time for a break. Use this time to reconnect with activities that bring joy and fulfillment in the real world, like reading a book, practicing a hobby, or simply enjoying nature. By adopting these practices, you not only protect your mental health, but also rediscover the beauty of your own story, without the constant need for comparison with others' stories. Remember, each of us has a unique path to walk, filled with highs and lows, triumphs and challenges, and that's precisely what makes each story, including yours, so valuable and unique. Eighth point, the pursuit of external approval. We live in a world where a person's value often seems tied to others' perception. But today, I invite you to explore the liberation that comes from disentangling yourself from this incessant quest for approval. Imagine yourself on a stage under the spotlight, surrounded by a crowd of expectant faces, each with an opinion on how you should act, speak and be. Do you see how suffocating that can be? Now visualize stepping away from that stage and entering a tranquil and serene space, a place where the only opinion that truly matters is your own. This metaphor illustrates the importance of recognizing and valuing your internal voice above external noises. When we base our actions and decisions on seeking approval, we distance ourselves from who we truly are and what we genuinely desire. It's as if we're constantly trying to fit into a costume that doesn't fit us just to please others. Now think about the times when you felt most fulfilled and content. They were probably moments when you were aligned with your own values and beliefs, regardless of what others thought or expected. That's the essence of living authentically. But how can we practice this in our daily lives? It starts with small steps. For example, the next time you're about to make a decision, ask yourself, am I doing this because I truly want to, or because it's what others expect from me? Learn to trust your intuition and understand your own desires and needs. Another powerful practice is strengthening self-esteem. Value your qualities, celebrate your achievements, and learn from your mistakes. Remember that self-acceptance is an ongoing process and each small victory counts. And finally, cultivate relationships that support and encourage you to be your best self. Surround yourself with people who respect your individuality and encourage you to express your true essence. By freeing ourselves from the need for external approval, we open doors to a more authentic and fulfilling path. It's a path that allows us to be the true protagonists of our lives, writing our own stories with the inks of authenticity and courage. And thus, we conclude this second topic, hoping that it serves as an invitation to reflect on how you can live a more authentic life, true to yourself, away from the shadows of others' approval. Ninth point, how we deal with our relationships, be it friendship or love, Relationships are like mirrors, reflecting the various facets of our lives, and with them come experiences. But there's a delicate line here, the line of privacy and discretion. Think of a relationship as a secret garden, a place where you cultivate emotions, dreams and special moments. This garden is sacred, a space deserving of respect and care. When a relationship comes to an end, whether it's a friendship or a romance, there's confusion and a need to process what happened. However, it's essential to remember that the details of this garden, of this shared story, belong solely to you and the other person involved. By choosing not to disclose intimate details or the reasons for the breakup, you not only preserve the dignity of both parties, but also protect your own heart. Sharing this information with third parties can open doors to misunderstandings, 
judgments and, worse yet, gossip. This does not contribute to healing. On the contrary, it can prolong the pain and create a cycle of negativity. So, how can we handle the end of a relationship in a healthy manner? First and foremost, it's crucial to give yourself time and space to heal. Allow yourself to feel the emotions, but do so introspectively. If necessary, seek the support of a mental health professional, someone who can provide objective guidance and support. Secondly, cultivate the habit of personal reflection. Instead of seeking external validation or comfort, turn inward. Question what you've learned from this relationship and how you can use these lessons to grow. Every relationship, even those that end, brings valuable lessons. Finally, remember that maintaining discretion and privacy is a sign of maturity and respect, not just for the other person, but also for yourself. As you close a chapter in your life, do so with grace and dignity, knowing that each experience prepares you for what's to come. And so, we conclude the ninth point, hoping that it sheds light and perspective on how to face the end of relationships with wisdom and respect, maintaining the dignity and privacy that you and the other person deserve. Tenth point, letting go of unrealistic expectations this is an invitation to an internal journey where we'll explore how our expectations can shape and sometimes distort our perception of reality. Let's begin with a metaphor. Imagine your life as a grand adventure across a vast ocean. Each expectation is like a sail on your boat, helping propel you toward your dreams and goals. However, when these sails are too large, when our expectations become unrealistic, they can steer us off course, leading us into turbulent waters of disappointment and dissatisfaction. Unrealistic expectations are like maps, promising treasures that don't exist. They make us chase ideals of perfection in ourselves, others, and the situations we experience. But the question we must ask is, are these ideals truly ours? Or have they been imposed by external influences such as society, culture or even the media? To begin detaching from these expectations, we must first acknowledge them. This requires honesty and introspection. Ask yourself, do these expectations uplift me or burden me? Do they reflect who I truly am and what I value? The next step is to practice acceptance acceptance of who you are, where you are in your journey, and the circumstances you cannot control. This doesn't mean giving up on your dreams, but rather recognizing and appreciating the process of getting there with all its imperfections and challenges. Furthermore, it's essential to learn to set realistic and achievable goals, goals that resonate with your true essence rather than an idealized image of success. This also involves celebrating the small victories along the way, recognizing that each step, no matter how small, is valuable progress. Lastly, remember that the journey is as important as the destination. By letting go of unrealistic expectations, you allow life to flow more naturally and smoothly, making space for surprises and joys that couldn't be planned. And thus, we conclude the 10th point, hoping it inspires you to navigate life with sails adjusted to reality, appreciating the beauty of the journey with all its twists and discoveries. Eleventh point, involvement in gossip and the propagation of negativity. In this segment, we'll explore how choosing to distance ourselves from these behaviors can not only improve our state of mind, but also enrich the quality of our relationships. Imagine every word we say as a seed planted in the garden of our lives and the lives of others. When we choose words of support, encouragement and positivity, we sow seeds of kindness and understanding. On the other hand, when we engage in gossip or negative speech, we're planting weeds of misunderstandings, distrust and conflicts. Participating in gossip may seem harmless or even a form of social connection, but in reality, it's a two-way street that leads to disrespect and devaluation 
of others and ourselves. Additionally, by focusing on negativity, we feed a mindset that clouds our ability to see the good and positive around us. So, how can we steer away from this road and choose a more positive path? First and foremost, it's essential to be mindful of the conversations we engage in. When a dialogue starts veering toward gossip or unnecessary criticisms, try gently changing the subject or highlighting something positive about the person or situation in question. Additionally, practice empathy. Before speaking or sharing something about someone, ask yourself, would I like this to be said about me? This simple question can be a powerful guide to maintaining respectful and constructive conversations. Another important step is to cultivate a positive environment around you. Surround yourself with people who also value positivity and authenticity in interactions. Together, you can create a culture of mutual respect and support. Lastly, remember that change starts with you. By choosing not to participate in gossip and negativity, you not only protect your own integrity, but also set an example for others. By embodying these principles in our lives, we can foster a more positive, empathetic and resilient mindset, contributing to more genuine personal growth and more meaningful interpersonal relationships. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos, and of course, leave your like and comment. I'll leave two more videos that will appear on your screen now. Enjoy your journey of wisdom. Stay well with the Creator.